Alrighty, thank you for tuning in. Multiplying Freedom Ministries Monday night class on keeping your freedom. Keeping your freedom is very important. Um, you don't want to go through all of the um, preparations and prayer and through an entire deliverance session and then not keep your freedom. And if you're doing self-deliverance, which we talked about last week, you don't want to do self-deliverance and then not keep your freedom. Either way, freedom is something that's available. And tonight we're going to get into very, very practical matters that say, here is how you keep your freedom. It's very simple. None of this stuff is complicated. I've been saying this for a long time. Deliverance ministry, spiritual warfare, there are parts of it that have some tricky components. There are certain spirits that are maybe not that easy to understand how they work, why they work, what they do. But the basics of deliverance and warfare are very simple. It all comes down to a few simple principles. The top one being living a life that makes it hard for the enemy to hang on to. Not giving the enemy stuff to work with. Not giving the enemy too much room to work. Not giving him place, as King James says, give no place for the devil. You want to live a life that gives him nothing to hang on to. Now, a good self-deliverance or a good deliverance session will give you a degree of freedom that you didn't have before because certain things that were going on in your life, certain things that happened to you were are not any longer going. And so what you've got is a situation where you've got a difference. You've had stuff being broken off. You've seen, you've had stuff being taken in. And what you've got is a situation where you have less for the enemy to hang on to, less for the enemy to beat you up about, less for the enemy to tempt you with. So tonight we're going to go into what are the basics of that. Jesus said in John chapter 5, verse 14, after he had healed somebody, he said, behold, you have become well. Do not sin anymore, so nothing worse happens to you. Now, if Jesus said this, we'd better pay close attention. Um, you know me, I'm very, very strong on study what Jesus said, study what Jesus did. There's no substitute for knowing how Jesus responded to situations, how Jesus responded when sick or demonized people approached him. What did he do? How did he do it? Why does it look like he did it? Here you have somebody was healed and he said, don't sin anymore. Otherwise, nothing, something worse could happen to you. We need to take this very seriously. We have had people come to us for deliverance. We've done hours of deliverance ministry with them. And less than a day later, they're going back and doing things that we strongly, strongly caution them and urge them. Don't go here. Don't do this. This practice or this way of thinking leads you into trouble. Please don't do it. Say no. And they go back. And it's like, welcome to deliverance ministry or, or pastoral ministry or prayer ministry, whatever you like. But ultimately, we need to have a, a um, principle. There are certain things that if we go back to them, bad stuff will happen. Now, the battle is in the mind. The battlefield is your mind, it's your heart, it's your feelings, it's your memories, it's your thoughts, what's going on inside of you, the stuff that nobody can see except God. Uh, the Bible is silent on whether the enemy can read your mind. It does not say one way or the other. But we know that at the very least, the enemy has spirits that watch you. Listen. They watch your friends, they listen to your friends, they watch your family, they watch everything. They investigate, they're very smart. They've been watching you since you were in your mother's womb. So they know what your tendencies are. So our thoughts, our actions, our prayers, 
how responses to situations affect the degree to which our spiritual freedom is maintained or diminished or lost. There are people who they go and they are just, they're all fired up after deliverance. But before long, old habits come along. Old habits are coming back. And we need to figure out why do old habits come back? What's going on? People are not vigilant. Vigilance is really, really important. Jesus said in Matthew 12 and Luke 11, read the story of the house that was swept clean and then nothing was done with it. And soon the spirit came back, bringing seven others more wicked than itself. And the last state of that person was worse than before. Make sure that does not happen. It's very important to pay close attention. <clears throat> Make sure that you're filled with the Holy Spirit. We pray around here all the time, and we often ask God to fill us with the Holy Spirit, often, repeatedly. We don't just say, well, we're filled and we're filled. We ask God to fill us with the Holy Spirit, to pour out his gifts, to pour out his abilities, pour out the supernatural, pour out revelations, all kinds of things we ask God to do. I have a list of them. There's a lot of things that I do. I believe in lists. Lists can be very helpful. They can show you things to pray for because my memory is not what it was 20 or 30 years ago. We ask God to pour out vision and sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, revelation, healing, freedom, sharpness, spiritual hunger, signs and wonders, spirit overflow. We ask God to restore things that we used to have that the enemy stole from us. There's a lot of things we ask God to give us. We ask God to return things the enemy sold, goods, wealth, health, relationships, energy, youth, blessings, gifts, and wholeness. It says in Psalm 103, he restores your youth like the eagle. We pray, we believe that scripture. Believe God that he can, will, and wants to restore your youth like the eagle. Ask him for it. It's in the word. It says he forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. When you're in a battle, remember the enemy is going to come back. If you have had self-deliverance, and you ought to be doing self-deliverance periodically, listen to the Holy Spirit and ask him, what do you need to deal with? Maybe you need to deal with one thing or another thing. But keep on doing self-deliverance. If you've had a deliverance session, go back and clean house. Remember that you're in a battle and the enemy will come back to the areas that he knows are weakest for you. Everyone has weaknesses and the enemy knows what they are. He will not forget. He will not overlook. He will not leave you alone in that area. If you strengthen it sufficiently, he will go away and he'll find another area that he feels as weak. When old thoughts, temptations, and feelings come back, immediately rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Refuse them. Cast them down in the name of Jesus. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And just say, in the name of Jesus, I refuse that thought. I refuse that feeling. I refuse that temptation. I refuse that old habit. I refuse it. I renounce it. I break my connection with it. I break my agreement with it. I cast it down. I refuse it in the name of Jesus. Keep Jesus as Lord every moment. Be in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit, how does he want you to live? Every moment. If you sense the Holy Spirit whispering to you, if you sense the Holy Spirit speaking to you, nudging you in any way. Pay close attention. Write it down if you have to. Obey the Holy Spirit. That is the single most important thing you can do to keep your freedom. Obey the Holy Spirit. Ask the Father. Holy, ask the Father, Lord, please allow me to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit clearly, sharply, with great discernment to know at any moment what God wants me to do. Don't slip back into old habits. Become familiar with spiritual warfare practices. Most people are not taught these in church. They've got to learn them someplace else. Use the name of Jesus. Use the blood of Jesus. 
James chapter four, one through eight. There's a whole thing. Maybe I'll do a session on it sometime. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. What does it mean to resist the devil? Anything the devil uses, whether it's a feeling, a thought, a situation, if you know that this is a situation or a thought or a feeling that is not helping you stay close to God, it's not helping you follow Jesus, ask the Holy Spirit to help you to fight, 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 fight. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. This is what we have to do. Spiritual warfare psalms. There's a lot of psalms. I would encourage you to read the book of Psalms through every one. Find out the ones that have spiritual warfare implications and then start praying phrases from these. I'll just run down a few of them. 3, 18, 27, 34, 44, 68, 91, 118, 121, 144. I'll read it again. 3, 18, 27, 34, 44, 68, 91, 118, 121, 144. Take phrases from these psalms and start praying them. The, the greatest thing you can do for yourself, aside from being filled with the Spirit, listening to the Spirit, is start praying the scriptures. I learned this when I was one year old in the Lord. That was 1982. I, saw, I was at a meeting, and a guy showed us how to pray scripture. He was regular, like, Baptist-type guy. He was not a word of faith, name and claim it guy. People have been praying the scriptures and quoting it and claiming it for many, many years. Start praying the scriptures and hanging on to them. For example, what I bind on earth is bound in heaven, and what I loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Period. There's no exception given by Jesus. Well, only if, and only if, and if it, if not this, then this, and no. It says, what you bind on earth is bound in heaven. What you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Whatever two of you agree about anything on earth, it will be done for my Father. Get used to the prayer promises. Pray them as though your life depends on them. Holiness, fast obedience, living in the fear of the Lord. Holiness is not legalism. Holiness is not a bunch of church rules and regulations. Holiness is not some sermon that's full of things that some preacher wants you to do. Holiness is submission to the Holy Spirit. Holiness is resisting the world, the flesh, and the devil. Holiness is living the way Jesus said to live. Holiness is submitting yourself instantly to anything the Holy Spirit whispers to you. Holiness and obedience. If we're not obedient, we're giving more honor to the devil than we are to the Lord. The devil makes full use of that, and he will have such a person back in trouble very quickly. Let me say that again. When I obey God and I follow the Holy Spirit, I am honoring and worshiping God. When I disobey God or disobey the Holy Spirit, or I don't honor the scriptures and obey them, I am resisting God, I am turning from God, and I am following what the devil wants me to do, which is to disobey God and dishonor his word. The devil makes full use of that. You can be sure of it. Living in the fear of God. Do a, do a Bible study on the fear of the Lord. You will be amazed at what it says. Do a Bible study on the fear of God. Do a Bible study on sin and its consequences and on holiness and its blessings. You will be amazed. If you read the Proverbs, Proverbs has a lot to say about the fear of the Lord. It has a lot to say about obedience. It has a lot to say about doing the right thing and what follows and doing the wrong thing and what follows. For years, I read the book of Proverbs through every month. Today is the 13th of the month. You can read Proverbs chapter 13. You can read it in less than 15 minutes, maybe less than 10 minutes. Find one verse in the Proverb chapter that corresponds to the date on your calendar 
you will always find one verse that stands out to you. It is a way of God getting your attention and guiding you on something that you wouldn't otherwise remember or notice. One reason that I like Proverbs is that people who are struggling with issues that led them to seek deliverance ministry or self-deliverance, the enemy always wants us to be deceived. He wants us to be seduced and to wander off the path into strange doctrines and strange practices. Proverbs is very practical and can help us stay on the path without getting off into strange beliefs or strange practices. Read the lives of the Old Testament believers and watch how they lived. Read the great ones. Read Moses. Read Abraham. Read Elijah and Elisha. Read David. Read the lives of the Old Testament believers. Watch how they lived and what happened. These are things, I mean, Romans, Paul says, everything in the Hebrew scriptures was written for our instruction. That includes how people lived. The Old Testament believers, they didn't know about Messiah the way we do now. But all of them lived by grace through faith. All of them embraced the voice of the Lord through the Holy Spirit by grace through faith. We can learn from them. We don't think that the Old Testament believers were legalistic, small-minded things. They didn't have Bibles like we did. They didn't have a lot of the stuff that we do. They went in naked faith on the voice of God as he spoke to their spirits. We can learn a lot from them. Praise and worship. Praise and worship is, you know, don't need to say much about it, except it's very helpful. Have it on. Have it playing in your house. The enemy does not like to listen to that kind of music. Read psalms for praise and worship and memorize them. Memorize hymns and sing them. I have hymn books at the house. I'm a musician. I get out my guitar and I sing hymns for Nancy and me. And I sing worship choruses. Some of them I'm close to having memorized after singing them for many years. Um, Revelation has many hymns and worship places. Revelation 4 and 5, Revelation 7 uh, and 8 has a lot of very cool worship in there. Another thing that's really important when you're asking God to keep you on track, every morning and almost every night, there are two things I pray. And I also pray these before a deliverance session. I cover myself, I say, Father, cover us in the blood of Jesus. I cover ourselves, our thoughts, our words, our activities, our feelings, our memories, our bodies, our souls, our marriage, our ministry, our houses, our cars, our pets, our friends, our family, I cover them in the blood of Jesus. I ask you, Lord, to send your mighty angels to surround us, to fight for us, to encourage us, to strengthen us. I've said this in other classes in uh, the early chapters of the Gospels. When Jesus was in the wilderness, after the devil departed from him, the Lord sent angels, and angels ministered to him. They helped him. The Greek there is the same word we get deacon from, diakonos, helping. They helped Jesus. They served his needs. They took care of him. Ask God to send angels to help you take care of you and help you with your needs, plus to fight for you, to defend you, to discomfort the enemy and everything else you need. Um, I'll put up some very practical, practical stuff to read. Uh, first, Nancy's posts in our group. Read all of her posts and then read them again. If there's prayers, pray the prayers. If there's prayers, pay attention to what they say. It's really, really, um, it's really, really important. Look at those posts. They are talking about the most practical things imaginable. Nancy puts untold hours into this. I watch her. The stuff that she puts in, read it. It'll change your life. Um, somebody has a question. Uh, I bought a hymn book, but I don't know the tunes. Um, you can you can find um, YouTube videos of people singing old classic hymns. I learned them in church, but um, you can go online and learn uh, the tunes from YouTube videos. There's YouTube videos of practically everything, and that includes hymn tunes. 
hymns are very, very important. Some of those hymns are so deep, it's almost like scripture. It's almost like a Bible, Bible study or a commentary. Charles Wesley, Isaac Watts, there's a number of them. They just put the truth of God into something very, very deep. Um, so Nancy's posts in the group or on our website. Our website is multiplyingfreedom.com. Our email address is multiplyingfreedom at gmail.com. Our Facebook page is Multiplying Freedom Ministries, and our group is Deliverance Help and Discussion Group. If you're not in the group, join the group. If you're in it, make use of it. Um, there's a, an African author that we like very much. We have a couple of his books, Daniel Olakoya from Nigeria, Prayer Rain and Prayer Passport. This is Prayer Rain and Prayer Passport. These are books with devotions, prayers, scriptures. It's like a Bible study. He's got, you know, hundreds of chapters in here. He gives you a lot of scripture. He gives you a lot of things to, to read and study. And then he gives you some, Bible, some verses to pray. He calls them prayer points. That's a, a very African thing. He just gives you like sentences to pray. And after a while, you get to pray that way yourself. Another thing that I like, um, Daniel Duvall, Prayers That Shake Heaven and Earth. Uh, Daniel Duvall's out of Texas. Um, this book is very helpful. I wouldn't exactly, I don't exactly pray everything just the way he does. Pray what you can, how you can. My, my advice for everything, including the Psalms, is get it in front of you and adapt it. Adapt it so that you can um, adapt it so that you can pray it yourself, make it your own. So whether it's Daniel Duval or Daniel Olakoya or the Psalms, read them over in a prayerful state of mind and figure out, okay, how am I going to make this a prayer that I can pray? Um, in the files section of Deliverance, Help, and Discussion, there are a number of things I would encourage everybody to pray, um, unless you've been praying them for years. One is the a prayer of release from Freemasonry. This is in the files section, prayer of release from Freemasonry. It'll take you a while. It goes through every degree of Freemasonry, and it lists ways, prayers and renunciations of all of the oaths and the curses and everything else. Another thing is to take a look at a uh, document that I put in there by Arlen Epperson, Reasons Healing May Not Occur. It's good to know some of the reasons why healing and deliverance are not maintained. I did a study on this one night and it was very interesting. Um, that's in the files section. I wrote something called Who's in Charge? That ought to be read and read out loud by people for a while until it affects you. Healing and faith verses. I hand typed a bunch of healing and faith verses, KJV. They're very, very good for maintaining faith, overcoming, healing, and deliverance. And then there's Gene Moody stuff in there. I've taken Gene Moody's work deeply into my own heart and soul, and I put up four documents in there. One is called Short Edited Gene Moody Warfare Prayers. I've take that's one page of a compilation that I did from two of his books. It's packed, it's very powerful. The other is called Short Starter Prayers AM PM. Short prayer for AM and a short prayer for the PM. I pray prayers like that every morning and every evening. Don't go to bed without prayer. Don't get up in the morning without prayer. Don't go through the day without prayer. Moody's prayers can help you. Another one is um, the Spiritual Warfare Prayer Book and the Prayer Manual. These are like 40 page little booklets by Moody. The, da the um, downloads are in the file section. You can download them off the internet. You can order them in hard copy. Um, I've used them for quite a while. I first ran into Gene Moody's prayers maybe five years ago or so. Very powerful stuff. Much of the material on demonbuster.com comes from Gene Moody. 
It's not his site, but they put up a lot of material by Gene. He's a pioneer. He's really, he was a friend of Wynne Worley. So he goes back, him and, and Wynne Worley would hang out and they had overlap on their ministries and he learned a great deal from Worley. Wynne Worley passed away in 1995 after 25 years of deliverance ministry. So my advice would be go order those two books, Spiritual Warfare Prayer Book and the Prayer Manual by Gene Moody. Order them or print them out and start marking them up in pencil or pen. What I did was I took my copies and I marked them up heavily and I found out which prayers I liked, which prayers I would use, and I adapted them to my own style and my own outlook. Very, very powerful. It's there, and plus there's tons of Bible verses in there. Even if you download those two books, Spiritual Warfare Prayer Book and the Prayer Manual, even if you just download them and scan them for Bible verses and prayers, very powerful. If you don't want to take that kind of time, I put the most effective prayers into the document titled Short Edited G. Moody Warfare Prayers. One page PDF, it's loaded. And then the short starter prayers. Read the Psalms, pray the Psalms. Read the Psalms, pray the Psalms. Read the Psalms some more and pray them some more. I went through a period back in the 90s when I was reading the Psalms through every month. That was five Psalms a day and a couple of sections of Psalm 119. And I got to be intimate with the book of Psalms. Intimate. I was reading them in the NIV and I got to know them really, really well and they affected my prayer life. Now when I'm doing deliverance ministry, I've gone back to the Psalms once again and find, found out that many, many of the Psalms have very strong applications to deliverance ministry and spiritual warfare, but they won't do you any good if they're just a bunch of poems in the middle of your Bible. Make it a goal to go through and read the entire book of Psalms through and look for phrases within them that have to do with spiritual warfare. Many of them are the Psalms of David and they have to do with David's enemies. They have to do with him being under attack, him being oppressed, him wanting to fight back. Go through and study those and make them your own. The Psalms are only as helpful as the use you put them to. Ditto for the Proverbs. I like Proverbs because they keep us away from weird, flaky deceptions. We have seen people coming out of deliverance ministry, and they are very excited, but they go charging off into weird, flaky deception. One reason for that is they're not grounded in the Word. I've talked before about reading the Gospels all the way through, every word. Get familiar with what Jesus said and did and taught. It'll change your life. Read through the epistles of Paul, every word, even the ones that don't seem to be of much use. You will find the Holy Spirit will make very good use of them. Read through a book like 1 John, James, 1 Peter, 2 Peter. This stuff is loaded and much of it is never preached on in churches. But the Holy Spirit will show you what to do. But make time, uh, make time for the word, make time to study it, even if it's only studying a few verses. Make sure you do it when you're, when you're not too tired, when you're not too busy, when you're not too distracted. Find some time, find time for prayer, enough for reading. Forgiveness, oh, well, I'm a Christian, so I can't, I, I need to forgive, I've forgiven everybody. Well, good luck. Many Christians feel like that, but there's still lingering resentments, lingering hurts, lingering frustrations towards people. If you notice it, stop what you're doing and deal with it. Or make a note, write it down, and deal with it very soon. If somebody hurts you, and people will, if you're, you know, we're, we're all just human, something's going to offend you, hurt you, frustrate you, you're going to have a misunderstanding, even with people that you love very much, sometimes especially with the people you love very much. Quick forgiveness. Refuse to hold on to unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment, and frustration toward another person. Refuse it. It is the enemy's biggest and baddest door to come in, maybe second only to sin. 
but holding on to those feelings is also sin because Jesus said, release it, forgive, forgive 70 times seven. Paul said, as much as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. That includes forgiveness. Paul said in his letters, forgive other people as freely and completely as God has forgiven you. Now, he couldn't have put it any more plain and simple than that, but many people, they'll never do it. Often because what's happened to them is unforgivable. And I, you know, I like to use that phrase. Forgiving the unforgivable is something only God can help us do, but God will help us do it. So bring current hurts quickly to God for forgiveness. Be prepared to ask for forgiveness. Engage or reconciliation or make restitution. Sometimes if you've had a troubled past, and I've had a troubled past, yes, I have. I've had a troubled past. I've had to go back and ask people to forgive me. I've had to go back and make restitution. I've had to go back and deal with situations where I messed up and I caused hurt or trouble or problems for others. Go back and make it right. God will bless you. And that leaves less for the enemy to mess with, less for the enemy to deal with you about. Anything the Holy Spirit says, do it. The words of Jesus's mother at the wedding in Cana of Galilee. There is the, all these big earthenware jugs, we might call them barrels today, basically, Jesus' mother looked at the people and said, whatever he says to you, do it. Well, that's good advice for us. Whatever he says to you, do it. Your freedom and your sanity may hang in the balance. If you fall, repent fast. Close the door fast. The enemy knows where all of our sins have gotten us. The enemy knows what our tendencies are, what our temptations are, what our usual responses are. He knows all this stuff. If it happens, and it probably will someday, repent fast and close the door fast. Anytime you see that you've been resisting the Holy Spirit, questioning God, second-guessing God, brushing God off, brushing off the Holy Spirit, letting sin remain, tolerating sin, delaying disobedience, delaying following what the Lord is saying, repent and forsake whatever is involved. Got to do it. Otherwise, the enemy has a big wide barn door wide open and he will come in and make continuing trouble. That's what he does. He's looking for ways to come in. Probably the two biggest ways to do it are a sin that is not dealt with and unforgiveness, bitterness, frustration, tension, in a relationship. Those are the two big open doors post-deliverance. Healthy lifestyle. What does this have to do? Well, you know, the spiritual is natural and the natural is spiritual. Exercise, rest, and whatever helps you manage stress, as long as it's not sin. Um, if you're tired, if you feel terrible, if you're full of stress, you're not going to be fighting the battle as well as if you're not tired feeling bad and full of stress. Even in battlefields, take care of it and say, I need to get, I need to go to bed early tonight, or I need to go for a walk, or I need to take a Sabbath rest. I need to give myself a break. Nancy and I, we have an expression, we're off the clock. We just punched out, we're off the clock for the night. We could, we have people literally messaging us from around the world, asking for help, pleading, bringing us the most desperate situations imaginable and some that are unimaginable. We have to do limits or we'll be consumed. There's no way we could possibly handle it all. Yeah, we have a waiting list. We'd rather not have a waiting list, but if we tried to get everybody all on track right away, we'd burn ourselves out. We've done it before. We learned the hard way. Let's not learn the hard way. So lifestyle, rest and stress. You know at this point in your life what brings stress. Well, 
figure out how to diminish your stress, figure out how to help you sleep better. Exercise helps many people sleep better, helps them feel better, relaxes stress, eating the right foods. Many people are noticing that when they're eating high sugar, high carbs, sometimes high caffeine, they, they don't feel so good. You've got the, the carb, the sugar and carb crashing, you know, other dietary things. At this point, most people have at least a fairly good understanding of what foods are good for them, what foods aren't. This is important. I put it in here for practical reasons because these are not just teaching, they're training and everything has to be practical. Uh, somebody mentions working through the workbook by Mark Bubeck, Prepare for Battle, Spiritual Warfare Workbook. Yeah, um, forgiveness. Bubeck is a good guy. He taught at Moody for many years. He was one of the first uh, conservative evangelicals to talk about deliverance back in the 70s and 80s. And he was horrifying many you know, conservative evangelicals by talking about Christians needing deliverance. Bubeck is a very good guy. Mark Bubeck, B-U-B-E-C-K. His best known book is probably The Adversary, but he's written a lot of books. Uh, his stuff is very sound. Like Neil Anderson, there's a lot of books. You could go on and on forever. So back to lifestyle. Make sure that your life is healthy. Make sure that you're getting some time off, time to get away. Nancy and I will go out for a drive in the country. We might go to a thrift store. We might go for a walk. We might just uh, turn off our phones and just goof off around the house and not do very much for a day. It's really healthy. We found that we figured out things that help us stay relaxed and take care of our mental and emotional well-being. Our life could be ministry all day, every day, into the night, and we would burn out and we would be no good to anybody. Like I said, we've done it. We've learned the hard way. Just take care of yourself. Usually, sleep, exercise, diet are three good ways, places to look. Some people like to read. Some people like to watch a movie and listen to music. You know, as long as you know it's not opening a door the enemy can make trouble with, take care of yourself. If there's something in your life that you have a suspicion God is not happy with. It could be a, just a little uneasiness. It could be a lack of peacefulness. It could be something where, oh, yeah, I don't know, I, I guess it's okay. God doesn't seem to have a big problem with it. If you have to rationalize it, just get rid of it. If you sense that you don't have perfect peace about something, get rid of it. The enemy wants things to stay in your life that you're not peaceful about. Usually that means the Holy Spirit wants you to get rid of something or change something. One of the things in the Methodist movement back in the 18th century, they had small groups, like life groups or home groups or whatever you call them. They met small groups every week and they would go through spiritual questions together and they would say two things. They had talked about other things, but can you imagine going to your small group and knowing you were going to be asked, so um, did you have any temptations this week in any situations? Um, can you share with us a situation where you had temptation and how did God help you to overcome it? Mm. The other one was, is there anything in your life that you are wondering, hmm, I wonder whether this is the Lord or... Am, am I okay or do I need to get rid of this? And, and you knew that you would be answering those two questions. But these people walk very close to God as a group. And if, the, if you know or you suspect that something is really not good for you, for your spiritual life and wholeness, just change it, get rid of it. It's not worth it. The enemy wants us to hang on to stuff that we know should be dealt with. And he wants us to hang on to it for as long as possible. Speaking of small groups, one of the best things you can do is be part of a small group. Now, most Thursdays, we run a, a small group, uh, Thursday, 7.30 Eastern time here on Zoom. But um, sometimes we take weeks off if we have conflicts or whatever. But 
being in a group, whether it's part of your church, another group that you found someplace else. Some, we have friends who go to a group like Celebrate Recovery. Celebrate Recovery is not just for alcoholics or people with you know, severe addictions. It's for people who are trying to live free. Hmm, that sounds familiar, sounds like us. People who want to live free. Groups that are helping you get mutual support, encouragement, prayer, good thing. Be part of one if there's any way you can do it. If you don't have a group, have a friend or two that you can share with. You can share what's going on in your life and talk about it, get prayer. If you have to say, look, I'm really struggling with this thing. I know I've told you before, I'm really trying, but I, I'm back in it and I need to get out. I need to change. Please pray. Be accountable somehow. It's good to have someone or a group that you can pray with, that you can talk with, that you can unburden your heart. It's really, really helpful. Sometimes people have one through their church. They might have it through the community, uh, another church, or a Christian ministry has a group. Some people are finding groups on Zoom or Facebook or whatever. But Staying free after deliverance is really, really hard if you're by yourself. Even if you're very spiritual, very strong, find somebody. Um, if you're in the deliverance help and discussion group, reach out to people who are in the group. Look for who's posting. Look for who's commenting. Look for who's responding to the posts. These are the people that are on track and they're really invested. Reach out to some of these people. It's really, really helpful. It'll help you more than you might guess. Lifestyle habits and changes don't happen overnight. Scientists will tell us that most lifestyle changes, changes of long-standing habits, take between a month and two months before you're really locked in. Somehow it just sort of takes a while for your brain to get into the habit of doing something new and changing the way you used to do it. Don't be frustrated and disappointed if your new habits that you're trying to work on post deliverance, whether it's self deliverance or whether it is a uh, deliverance with a ministry team, if it, if it doesn't seem to be going easily, be patient, give yourself time. Pray things that other people have read. Um, I pray all the time for people out loud. I pray on the spot. I get called upon to pray all kinds of places and I'm ready. But I didn't get there overnight. I read a lot of prayers by a lot of people from all kinds of Christian traditions. And I took the very best stuff that I, I got this line from this guy and that prayer from that guy and all over. I have books, shelves full of books on prayer and books of prayers, find out how prayer works best for you. Don't get discouraged because you can't pray like somebody else. Don't get discouraged because you can't do spiritual warfare like somebody else who's been experienced or who has special training. Start where you are. Start with baby steps. Start with simple prayers. Start with a prayer from the Psalms, adapt it into the first person, pray it. Pray Psalm 91, pray Psalm 121. Pray those Psalms that have spiritual warfare applications. Pray Ephesians 6, the full armor of God. Take scripture and pray it. It's one of the most powerful things. When you start praying scripture and your ears hear your voice speaking scripture, it's coming out of your mouth, your, your throat, your chest, your body is vibrating, literally. Your whole body is involved when you pray out loud. It changes the atmosphere. It changes you. If you take that, who's in charge, you pray it out loud, I guarantee you, you will notice a difference. I am seated in the heavenlies with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I speak with the authority of Almighty God and the Lord Jesus Christ. The bind on earth is bound in heaven. What I loose on earth is loosed in heaven, and I speak to the mountains, and they move. This is really important. I can't overestimate the, uh, the issue of 
praying along with scripture. Having good books of prayers, don't just memorize them, adapt them, pray them for yourself. G. Moody's prayers. I don't pray very many of his prayers just like he does, but I've adapted many of them. That's why I, that's why I studied them for years, is because people like G. Moody, people like Daniel Duvall, people like Daniel Olakoya, they all have something that I didn't have when I started reading their books. And I started praying them and adapting them. I pray them slow, pick up Daniel Duvall's book, and I pick it up and I go and I read it slow. And I read it slow enough so that I can adapt and change the words if I want to. I take Gene Moody's books, I take Daniel Olakoya's books, and I take it and I open it up and I just say slow. I cut off every link and label of demonic oppression in Jesus' name. Let my God arise and put to flight every mind control spirit in the name of Jesus. I command the spirit of death and hell to loose its hold upon my life in the name of Jesus. This is good stuff. But I don't pray it willy-nilly. I don't pray it just read them. Sometimes I do, but most of the time I adapt them. And adapting prayers is where the action is because then you're thinking about them. They're going into a deeper place in your spirit. There's a, there's a wonderful prayer. I'm going to pray it for us because we're almost uh, at the end of class tonight. I'm going to pray it for us, writ written by a great woman of God whose name was Lulu Cheesman. And she got herself free largely through self-deliverance. This is back in the 40s and 50s. Um, any ground that has been given to the enemy, any spiritual agreement, any spiritual surrender, any sin. And I'm going to pray this for us tonight. Father, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus, and I cover us in the blood of Jesus. I cover our whole, our minds, our thoughts, our households, our bodies, our souls, our memories, our feelings in the blood of Jesus. I ask you, Lord, to surround our households with your holy angels, multitudes of angels to fight for us, to bless us, to protect us, to take care of every need that we have to minister to us. Cover us with your protection. Put a wall of fire around us. Now I'm going to pray Lulu Schuisman's prayer. Right now, we here and now renounce and refuse any and all allegiances we have ever given to Satan and his hosts of wicked spirits. We here and now renounce and refuse any and all allegiances we have ever given to Satan and his hosts of wicked spirits. We break our agreements with them. We renounce them. We break our ties. We renounce every thought. We renounce every action. We ask God to, God to forgive us. We ask God to fill us with the Holy Spirit. We refuse to be influenced by them, and we refuse to be used by them in any way whatsoever. We reject all of their attacks on our minds, our souls, and our bodies. We bind the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ upon every circumference of our being, and we revoke all power and influence of these wicked spirits within us or around us. We resist all of them in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We plead the merits of that transaction upon the cross of Calvary, whereby Satan and all his powers became defeated foes. We stand upon the promises in the word of God, and in humble faith we do here and now put on the whole armor of God, and say that we are able to stand against all the wiles of the devil. So, going back to the beginning, resisting the devil is something that is commanded in the book of James. Paul writes about it. The enemy writes, the Lord Jesus writes about it. God wants us to hold the line and say no to the enemy. 
John 5, 14, Jesus says, look, you've just been healed. Don't sin anymore so that nothing more will happen to you, nothing worse. How we think, how we pray, how we act is extremely important. We can have a very deep, powerful deliverance and then just let it evaporate if we are not careful. And we have to be sober and vigilant as it is written. Remember that we're in a battle. Read the Psalms. Read them out loud. Pray them. Adapt them. Become familiar with spiritual warfare principles. James 4, 1 through 8. Study it. Different translations. Psalms. Psalm 3, 18, 27, 34, 44, 68, 91, 118, 121, 144. Pray them. Adapt them. Live in holiness, fast obedience, and living in the fear of the Lord. Obedience to the Holy Spirit, obedience to the Word of God is the only sure way that you will stay safe and the end, not give the enemy room to come in. Praise and worship, singing songs, praise music, worship music. Have it on, soak it into your spirit. Ask the Lord to send angels to protect you. Cover yourself in the blood of Jesus. Read and read some more. Study as though this, your mind and your spirit and your soul and their health depend upon it. Go and read. If you're not in the Deliverance Help and Discussion group, get into it if you're on Facebook. If not, go to our website. It's loaded with articles and blog posts. Many of them are very helpful. Read through them and pray them. Read Gene Moody's stuff in the files section of the group. Make any changes that the Lord wants you to make. God is always going to be speaking to you. Make sure that you're listening. Make sure that when the Holy Spirit listens to you, you are attentive, that you are listening, and that you obey. Walk as a in a lifestyle of forgiveness. Forgive, bless, release others. Completely bless them. Last week, go check out last week's class on self-deliverance. There was a major portion in there on self-deliverance, self-forgiveness and forgiving others. Make sure you're forgiving yourself. Go back to the self-deliverance class and review it sometime. It's very practical, very helpful. If you fall, repent fast, close the door fast. Don't leave the door open. Don't delay dealing with sin or the enemy will be building another stronghold in your life. And you don't want that. Healthy lifestyle, exercise, sleep, rest, diet. Make sure your lifestyle is helping you stay healthy. Make sure you're getting enough rest. Get some R&R, it's really important. It's underrated. You don't want to be a workaholic, either at work or in ministry. Even if you have a family and you have a busy family life, make sure you give yourself some downtime. Make sure you give yourself some rest. It's really important. Anything that you need to change that God is dealing with you, change it. Don't resist the Holy Spirit. Find a small group. If you can't find a small group, find a friend or two. Make sure that there are people in your life who are encouraging you, who understand what you're going through, who understand spiritual oppression and spiritual freedom. They understand spiritual warfare, and they are able to help you, even if it's straight encouragement. Encouragement is so important, you really need it to stay strong. Nancy and I encourage each other every day, as it is written, encouraging one another daily all the more as you see the day approaching. So maintaining your freedom, keeping your deliverance, it's very important, it's not complicated, it's not a problem, it's not difficult to do. All you've got to do is you've got to pay attention to the basics. Stay out of sin. If you find yourself, uh-oh, I did something, repent fast, close the door fast, forgive fast, release and bless others fast, obey the Holy Spirit fast. These are not things that take any money. 
They don't take going to a seminar or a workshop, buying courses, buying books. You can do all this with no budget, no money. All you need is willingness, availability, and a determination. I'm going to do whatever I need to do to stay free. So with that, we'll close up for tonight. God bless you. We're praying for you. If you have questions, you can email us. You can put a post in Deliverance Help and Discussion. Say, hey, uh, Bruce was talking about this in the class the other night. What about this? Or how does this work? Or what did he mean by that? We love to see posts come in with uh, questions. We do moderate and screen the questions so that they stay on track. But most of the stuff that we are, that we are putting up there, it's all pertinent to deliverance and spiritual warfare. So we'd love to hear from you. Questions, suggestions, bring them on. We love to hear from our friends. And with that, we'll sign off for the evening. We'll see you next week. Monday nights at 8 o'clock Eastern, Wednesdays 2 p.m. Eastern, which translates into evening in Europe, Asia, and Africa. So until then, we'll see you then. Good night.